All right, so I got out of the shower and I've been drying my hair while I'm about to start. Um, I finally got me a hair dryer that I can actually sit it under. So I just kind of want to show you guys a little bit of what I do. Um, I'm going through my hair just like you would do any other long hair to care or anything like that. But I'm literally taking my towel and I am like squeezing and I'm going from the root down. And I will tell you that real dreadlocks take a lot longer to dry than synthetic ones. Synthetic ones are pretty fast. It's not a big deal. Um, if you're wanting your synthetics to look more real, um, washing them and, you know, drying them and all that. Now, I also want to show you um, how to interlock your roots. I will show you, which you could see in my previous videos too, what my hair looked like before and what my root, of course I, I did get in the shower, so they're not as perfect as they were before. Um, that's why you always want to wash your hair before you do root lock maintenance or interlocking, any kind of maintenance. Um, this is what my roots look like now. Okay. This is a baby one. I plan on, I started that because I had, uh, I had a lot of like just free hair going, uh, which my bangs usually end up coming out anyways at over time, but I did have a lot. So I'm going to extend these little baby ones which that's going to be kind of hard to do because they're so tiny. Um, this is what my roots looked like before. Here's a good example. I didn't do these. This is after I interlocked them. This is before. This is after. Okay, now I'm pulling them apart. Things like that. You always want to shampoo your hair twice. The first time gets all the oils and, you know, grime. You want it, you want it as hot as you can get it stand. Uh, it's just like washing dishes. If you wash your dishes with cold water, that grease and stuff ain't going to come off as quick as it would with hot water. It's a perfect example. Um, so, uh, wash your hair with hot water and you want to shampoo it once and then rinse that and then shampoo it again. Um, so I'm going through all my dreads and just making sure none of them are like growing together. Oh, that was a good one. The back is usually the worst. Okay, because I haven't done that in a while. All right, so. <clears throat> I have this guy. He's my little interlocking buddy. I use him a lot. And then also, I have this little guy. Um. I'm going to end up, this is a, uh, this is virgin hair and I'm going to, I was experimenting. I wanted to just add some to give me more volume, but I wanted, I didn't want to put a synthetic in there. So it's been doing pretty good. 
this is just, you know, me playing around. Um, yeah, see all these need to be done. Now the front was, my hair is pretty much dry right now, so I'm just going to show you. But I'm still going to get under the hair dryer just to get the rest of them. Um, okay. I'm not using any product. Okay. I want those hairs to get over there. See all those baby hairs? Okay. These are the hairs. All right. So, we're going to try to do this so you all can see. <clears throat> Depending on how far your root has grown out will depend on how many times you're going to go through your root by interlocking them. <clears throat> you don't want to go too tight, but you don't want to leave a lot either. Um, and you do not want to go through the same hole twice. I'm going to take the pointed section of this. I'm not going to go through the middle. I'm going to go through like the perimeter of it. Can you see? Okay. So I stick that through. I'm going to pull that through the hole. Okay, through the same hole. Make sure you pull it really good. Okay? So, there, that's one time. Now, I know I want my dread to come down here. I'm not going to, like, pull my dread and it end up over here sort of going frontwards. So I'm going to go the opposite direction. I went through this way. I want to go this way, but I obviously am not going to go through that same hole. Okay. So, but in order to get there, I'm going to go this way and then I'm going to go that way, which will end me here because I'm pretty sure I can get this thing through two more times without it being uncomfortable. So we're going to go through. See how I'm going through like the perimeter of my parting? Okay. Oh. It's so hard to do it on yourself sometimes, depending. Okay, so. Stick that through that little hole. <laughs> Hold on. Stick that through the hole. Okay. And you only want, like, the end of it, because... The end of the dread, that's the main part you want it to go through first. So don't try to get that whole dread, like, in that hole. Okay. And sometimes some of those little hairs just want to, like, just make sure it's pulled tight. Okay. Now, see how there's, like, a little bit of, like, when that lays down? You know, you don't want that. So now, I'm going to go through, like, right here. Okay. Now you can use 
other those other interlocking tools. The tinier the the tinier the dreadlock, the tinier the interlocking tool. Um, see, I'm only pulling the putting the end of that through. Sometimes it needs a little bit of help. Okay. Now, if you have, if you if you have extensions like virgin ones that have been crocheted in. Alright. So, now, there's that. Now, if there's any little baby hairs that still are being stubborn, you can go in. Let me show you. I'm just getting too ahead of myself. Okay. You can go in with this little doodad. It's got a little interlocking tool. And you can go in and just grab any of those little like baby hairs. Make sure that latch is closed when you go back through. You know, like you want it to make sure it's. And you don't have to use that. You can use. Okay. And then. See how that's a lot closer. Ba -boom. It's not too tight. It's just, it's just right. Now, this is what I should have done on my other one. Well, these have been in for like a week or so. And then I got in the shower today. But they're still intact, you know. Um... So I did this one, and I'm probably not going to wash my hair for at least, like, four more days, maybe, maybe a whole week. Um, it depends on how much sweating and things like that. I uh, have not put no oils or anything on my hair. Um, I did use this, though. Did you this? Look, it's like almost empty. It's Dolly Locks. And it is Nag Champa. And it smells so good. It's very strong. It's pretty freak, freaking strong. But it it smells exactly like Nag Champa. And I'll show you what Nag Champa is. This is my favorite favorite incense in the entire universe since I started doing the whole incense thing when I was like way young like I don't know 14 15 I went to the little hippie stores and this right here I will order this stuff in bulk I get everything Nag Champa like I freaking love it and it lingers in the house, even after, like, I mean, you can smell it in your clothes. Ugh. So anyway, this is very strong, but how I use it, I use it on this part of my hair, um, because it, and, and I make sure I rinse it out real good, um, but I use it right here. I have a very sensitive scalp, so for me, um, it helps my hair smell amazing and it just keeps them it keeps them healthy um but I always make sure I leave it on for a second while I'm in the shower this is on my I shampoo my hair twice with other shampoo and then rinse all that out obviously 
squeeze my hair, and then I put this on, all the ends of it, and I let it sit there while I'm doing everything else. And then I rinse this out. But don't worry, that sucker, like, this, your hair smells so good afterwards. And here's the thing about washing dreadlocks. Here's the thing about dreadlocks. Um, if you take care of your dreadlocks, let me just say this. My hair smells way better. And I know a lot of dreadlocks that smell way better than any other person's hair that has no dreadlocks. So, that's if you take care of them. Okay, so there's my uh, little, you know, quote of the day. Dreads smell better than real. 50% of the time. There's that video.